All right, welcome back. Time now for the news from the left. Fox News apparently took glee in bringing down former President Donald Trump, a new book alleges. In his book, Landslide, author Michael Wolf says that Fox News took glee in shockingly calling Arizona for Joe Biden before any major network, putting an end to Donald Trump's re-election chances. Wolf says Rupert Murdoch, chairman of Fox News, personally made the Arizona decision and set off a behind-the-scenes firestorm. And do you remember how tight Arizona started getting after they made the call? It got closer and closer, down to, what, 10,000 votes out of 3 million they really, really almost made a huge mistake. Trump's advisors say Fox's Arizona decision was done to create a sense of inevitability of Joe Biden's win, limiting Trump's ability to justifiably contest other close states like Pennsylvania. Trump has blamed Fox largely for his election loss, even tweeting in the days after the 2020 election. The biggest difference between the 2016 election and the 2020 was Fox News. By the way, Newsmax waited much longer on Arizona because... We saw those numbers shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. It was getting tighter, tighter, tighter. And we were also the first to call Florida for Trump because it was just so friggin' obvious. They won by like three and a half points. It's a huge spread. All right, next up, the left so exasperated by Trump, they're reduced to name calling. We see it all the time. Journalist Carl Bernstein joined CNN's New Day this morning, which really isn't a very good show, and was asked for his thoughts on recent comments made by General Mark Milley regarding then-President Trump and comparing him to Adolf Hitler. It's the same Mark Milley that says he wants to understand white rage and is perfectly fine with critical race theory. Bernstein's reaction is the best part. What this extraordinary reporting reveals uh, is something, actually, it builds on what we already knew, that we had a crazy, delusional, authoritarian, dangerous, criminal president of the United States. His character, his authoritarianism, his recklessness, his, neg his homicidal negligence through the pandemic, all of this was known to our leaders. Went on, on, on. We keep hearing the authoritarian phrase, and that's what angers these career D.C. types and government officials the most. People like Bernstein have been in D.C. forever, have seen how the big government should really be. They embrace it so much. They love the big, powerful government. And it's also what the rest of us understood so perfectly about Donald Trump. It's not that he has some authoritarian wish to just take over all our lives and, and just get rid of the government. He just hates how painfully slow and dysfunctional and pathetic our government is. A guy that's just gotten stuff done for the last 75 years walks into D.C. and just sees a disaster. And that's exactly what D.C. is. And he just wanted to commandeer a system and make it function for the same reasons that every American hates government, the same reasons that we all gave him a chance to be the president, even though we knew he had never done any kind of politics. The damn thing doesn't work. And we thought maybe this guy can fix it. But of course, when you're a career politician or a D.C. journalist for 50 years, Trump's style is extraordinarily threatening. They hate him so much for it. It's just incredible to watch these people try so hard to paint this man as some kind of a brutal dictator, so desperate to ruin him and his reputation that they sank all their credibility to try and do so. It really is pathetic. I mean, they just don't get it. Next up, the liberal media cheerleading this massive socialist $3.5 trillion American Families Plan. MSNBC anchor Stephanie Rule uh, opened her show today cheering the expanded child tax payments being doled out by the White House and raising, uh, praising, I'm sorry, the massive $3.5 trillion spending bill being pushed by Democrats. A dream come true for this host. This is the kind of spending bill that could break record, records. It has the child tax credit. It has free pre-K. It has expanded Medicare benefits, clean energy. It is the Barbie dream house of improvements to the human condition. We all want to live in that Barbie dream house. Another white guilt limousine liberal. That woman spent most of her career working in finance, which is where all the evil people that only love money go building a nice pile of money, and now she makes even more, probably seven figures, and now she sits on MSNBC pretending she wants to give it all away to socialism. So phony. Finally, a new call to change the language surrounding a very sensitive subject. That would be sharks. Very sensitive sharks. Marine experts and advocates in Australia arguing that, quote, the majestic predatory fish has been unfairly stigmatized as a deliberate killer and urging the public to stop using the word attack when referring to them. Instead, officials suggest that more neutral terms should be used when describing violent run-ins with sharks, words like interactions, negative encounters, incidents, or simply plain old bites. 
Research of the Australian Marine Conservation Society told the Sydney Morning Herald that this change is important because it helps dispel inherent assumptions that sharks are ravenous, mindless, man-eating monsters. And we don't want to offend the sharks because we know they're watching. We actually have a very wide shark viewer base on this show. And they better cancel Jaws and Steven Spielberg while they're at it. Best movie ever, by the way. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.